So hello everyone and welcome to the gacha review, the how good is for regular Kyoko, where we talk about how good regular Kyoko is, because uh, it says right here that this is apparently a new magical girl who is going to be part of this for limited time only, and it says that she's like got a swimsuit version or something. Um, don't be fooled by any of this because as we're gonna as we're about to realize this is basically just almost exactly the same as Kyoko So of course there's going to be some memory I'm going to talk about those later But just a very quick to go with the stats as we usually do the element fire in PvP is ha is a, in a really interesting spot like when it comes to PvP uh, like mirrors fire is like the most interesting element to have because on one hand, of course, you have the you have so many water characters, like free to play water characters, Nanaka, Yachio, most notably, that will hunt water uni uh, fire units with a prejudice. Like Nanakas are going to absolutely destroy you, and you won't be really be able to do that much. However, because there are so many water units in mirrors, there will, there are also a lot of forest units trying to hunt the water units. You have units like Mummy, Holy Alina, Holy Mummy, units like that that are trying to hunt the water units. So usually the mirror is mostly just, most of it is water with some forest trying to counter the water. And fire is getting bullied by water, but if more people end up tr like trying to have teams that counter the water units and build more forest teams, suddenly fire becomes good again in trying to counter the counter to what is countering them, which is basically this sort of triangle, 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 how do you make a triangle? This is how you make a triangle. Actually I make a triangle like this, because I'm a German, but basically this is how the triangle is supposed to work and it's supposed to keep itself in check. But that said, apart from Kyoko and this other Kyoko right here, who is also Kyoko, fire doesn't really have much to do. So keep that in mind that if you're playing fire element, you're playing Kyoko. They might as well call this Kyoko element because there's pretty much no one else from this element that is really good. But enough about fire as an element. Uh, we're going to talk about the discs. It's exactly the same as regular Kyoko. We're going to talk about her type. It's also exactly the same as regular Kyoko. It's also attack and attack. whoop de doop de doo a quick note about the personal. Regular Kyoko's personal is Endure, which is very defensive and really weird. Okay, that's not really what you would play Kyoko for, but Summer Kyoko, look at that! Blast damage up 25% as an active when passives give more than 25%, but it's okay. If, like, the 25% blast up damage was pretty bad, but hey, we have MP gain up on this as well. Why is there MP gain up on a blaster? This personal is bad, don't worry about this personal. Take any other personal that increases damage in any way, like if it's an attack up, damage up, blast up, memoria, any other pa active memoria that does that is better than a personal. So just stick with that instead, it's a very pointless personal. But not to the actual important bit. Oh, the, the stats, certainly the stats are going to be very different. She has like 400 more HP, but 200 less defense, which uh, is somewhere around the same amount of bulk, so she dies about as fast as regular Kyoko. Pretty much nothing different there. But her attack, oh, she's got like, how much, this is like regular Kyoko's attack? What is, what is Swimsuit Kyoko's attack? Oh, it's like 400 more. It's actually more than 400, because Swimsuit Kyoko also gets a 9% uh, awakening bonus, and regular, bonus, uh, regular Kyoko gets a bonus of 8%. So she actually has slightly more attack and her blast also is 1% more because the regular Kyoko has 8% blast and she has 9% blast. Wow, so she's got like 5% or so, more than 5%, like 6% more attack like, or more damage in total than regular Kyoko. 6%, that's not a whole lot, it's almost nothing, but it is more uh, on the same disc set, wow. But certainly the, the connect, certainly the connect is going to be different, right? Certainly the connect is going to be completely special, it gives blast damage up 80%. Um, and regular Kyoko's only gives blast damage up 80%. But your regular Kyoko's gives 70% damage cut, while swimsuit Kyoko's gives 40% attack up, which is better for mo in most cases. In most cases, if you connect, you want the person you connect to to deal damage. In most cases, when you're connecting someone, you're not usually doing it for survivability, especially not when one part of that connect is blast up. So yeah, so. The connect is slightly better as well. I say slightly better because there actually are situations where you kind of do want people to survive for a little bit, especially on hard quests where the damage card might actually come in handy. 
So, that, but still, if I connect it slightly better, wow, that's pretty good. Hey, maybe the Magia is going to be different. Definitely the Magia is going to be very, very different. So, it deals attribute strength damage uh, to all enemies. Okay, certainly regular Kyoko does also not do exactly the exact, exact same thing. But hey, it's okay, because regular, what uh, the uh, swimsuit Kyoko does is it gives blast damage up to all allies. 50% on Magia level 5. Okay, 50, uh, 55%. Yeah, 55% to all allies for 3 turns on Magia level 5. Wow, regular Kyoko does exactly the same thing. Wow, isn't isn't that amazing, guys? Isn't that weird how they've made basically the exact same character? No, it's we're not done yet, okay? There's another part to their Magia, okay? Regular Kyoko buffs herself, it's a very selfish thing, buffs herself with 35% um, attack up, 45% actually with the scaling. So... 45% attack up is, if it was a damage up instead, is equivalent to maybe a 35% damage up. Uh, but what Swimsuit Kyoko does is she gives herself a damage up for 40, 55%. Uh, did I, wait a second, did I say 45%? Wait, 45% attack up is equivalent to about 55% damage up. Yeah, that's as it got because damage up is a little bit weaker. So it's, it's equivalent to about 55% damage up, and this thing gives 55% damage up to herself. It's, it's, it's basically the same. <sighs> maybe, maybe the doppel is different. No, the doppel is exactly the same. It's, 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 it's literally... It, it's just the same as the Magia, just a little bit better for both of them. It's... 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 Um, guys? Guys? Did they, did they just released the same character twice? Guys, did they just released the same character twice? They just released the same character twice, didn't they? With a slightly better personal that is still bad. Um, slightly less... Defensive and a little bit more aggressive, but only like slightly, like a slightly less um, defensive, but slightly more aggressive with the same disc set and same everything. <sighs> well, I, I guess the Suicide Kyoko is basically exactly the same as regular Kyoko. She's just a little bit more aggressive. And that's basically the entire thing that's different about her. Uh, if you, if you, we can like take a little glimpse into the future uh, in case you're wondering about should I draw for this because I, of course at some point I should answer this question. Um, but before I answer, should you draw for swimsuit Kyoko? I need to mention something else. Uh, I, I mentioned I'm not going to go over spirit enhancement. I'm not going to go over it. I'm just going to mention as a side note that basically her entire spirit enhancement is also exactly the same as regular Kyoko's. Apart from, okay, her anti-counter chance is 10% higher, but apart from that, it's exactly the same. Okay, but therefore, uh, she has, uh, the regular one is like 10% better on this one. It's basically exactly the same, but the active is slightly worse for Swimsuit Kyoko. Yes, regular Kyoko has a slightly better active than Swimsuit Kyoko, and it's like 10% more blast up. Look at that, it's 40% right here, and it's 50% right there on regular Kyoko. Regular Kyoko has like 10% more. Guys, I, I don't I don't know what to say. They've basically remade the same character. So to answer the question now, how good is uh, swimsuit version Kyoko? She's a tiny bit better overall than regular Kyoko, and regular Kyoko is by far the best fire unit in the entire game. An absolutely amazing blast gorilla. Regular Kyoko was an absolutely amazing blast gorilla, with the only downside of regular Kyoko being that she has a damage cut on her connect, but the swimsuit version fixes that by giving her actually a secondary attack uh, effect, making regular swimsuit, uh, not, not regular swimsuit, making swimsuit Kyoko the best fire blast gorilla, not just the best fire blast gorilla, the best fire character in the entire game for a long time. I think even right now on the Japanese server, she's probably the best fire uh, fire character in the entire game. So this is the best fire character in the entire game right here, even on Japanese server right now. Um, and the second best, just slightly behind, is regular Kyoko. So, and after that, it's like a really big difference between the next best character. So the two best characters for fire are both Kyoko, and they're both almost the same. Fire element is fucked. Fire element is like needs some needs a lot of work. Fire element really really needs some work, guys. Fire element has like no good free to play characters. I mean, Sword is fine, but. Ugh. But yeah, she's a blast gorilla. She has amazing attack. She doesn't immediately die like her bulk is is bad, but there's worse out there. Let me just say that. Like she's still I got way more bulk than Torka, for example. Um, more importantly, though, I need to mention this. Uh, if 
if you want to play PvP with this, Kyoko is actually really good. Like both Kyokos are really good for PvP because uh, once spirit enhancement happens, their spirit enhancement active is actually kind of broken. So Kyoko overall, to put it, to put all those memes that I've just mentioned in a basket. Yeah, if you want blast gorillas, Shinsu Kyoko is fucking amazing, but she's limited. And if you're like, oh, I don't really need a fire blast gorilla right now, and even though as far as blast gorillas go, she's fucking amazing. Um, I don't really care that much about that. To, like to have her right now, you can just say, well, I'm gonna set up, set up for regular Kyoko sometime in the future because she's unlimited, and maybe I'm just gonna randomly get spooked by her and get her as four slot, and then I'm gonna have a pretty good time anyway. So yeah, basically they could replace this right here with just regular Kyoko, and it will almost be exactly the same. Moving on, we have two Memoria. We have time for a treasure hunt, um, which gives excellent PK up. This is really weird because Sakura, uh, like, uh, swimsuit Sakura Kyoko's um, personal also gives MP gain up and her spirit enhancement also gives um, Magia because apparently swimsuit Kyoko is supposed to use Magia more than regular Kyoko, but she has, she's still a Blast Gorilla with only one Excellus, so he's not ever going to use Magia anyway unless you play with a Magia team and she's going to suck in a Magia team because you're not going to be able to get to Magia that easily on a, with her on the team because she's going to drop Blast Discs and you know what Blast Discs don't do? Generate MP. Um, so if you play her on a on an Excel team, you might just draw way too many Blast Discs and not actually get MP. So don't play her on a Blast team or don't, don't play her on like an Excel team unless you have like multiple people with Excel draw. Like if you have a Kako and a Madoka with both Excel draw, then maybe you can do it. But why go through all of that effort when you can just play another Excel Gorilla instead? Um, uh, instead of the Kyoko. I don't know. So it has Excel MP gain up because for some reason they think that this Kyoko is Magia character, uh, but also 30% blast up, which is more than her personal, and this is a passive. This is better than a personal, and it's a passive. <sighs> this has anti-charm, which is pretty good, um, on, on quests where charm is a thing. On quests where charm isn't a thing, of course, it doesn't do anything. So yeah, overall, it's interesting. It's actually really interesting, but not that great. If you're playing a Magia team, this is not good enough. If you're playing a blast team, this is not good enough. And there currently are no characters that do both blasting and Magia to such a degree that you would want a memory with both of them. You would rather just say, okay, my team is Excel, go for Excel and PKN up. Or my team is blasting, make uh, give me as much blast as possible. Uh, with Ren, for example, Ren can go to Magia because she has two Excel discs, but she also can blast a bit. But still, I would just choose either of the two and not do this weird mishmash where I'm doing a little bit more blast damage and maybe I'm gonna get to Magia, maybe not. And if I don't get to Magia, then this first bonus was kind of useless. I don't know. But yeah, it's maybe a tech choice for having an anti-charm, but charm isn't really that important of an effect. Like, yeah, it stuns, like it makes you unable to act, but it's a level one status ailment. Um, stun and bind are both more strong than charm, so eh, who cares? Just have an ultimate Madoka on your team, or like as a support even, and you're gonna be fine, like who cares? Um, so this one is not that great. And then we have Beach House Fun, where Kyoko is being very, very cute. By the way, I need to mention one thing about uh, Swimsuit Kyoko. Do, do you see that? I, that's a very important thing about Swimsuit Kyoko that I need to highlight. Whoops, uh, a very, very important thing I need to highlight. Uh, I need to zoom in. You see this right there? You see this right there? Where is it? This part right here, the bleb. The bleb is where the justice of the golden land lies. The bleb. That's the good stuff. Anyway, so yeah, she's being cute right here and she restored HP. 30% to self. That's weird. I've seen something like this before on another memoria that we have on the Japanese server. So the Japanese server actually had this. Um, sort of 200 days since release login bonus and they got this memoria which is basically exactly the same but it restores 35% instead of 30% I mean which makes sense because um, the other one was um, a three star memoria this is a four star memoria so it makes sense that it does more however every single person who played the game around the 200 days since release login bonus got this memoria on the Japanese server so they just have the, everyone just has this on the Japanese server we didn't get this on the North American server for some reason. Uh, we also didn't get the 300 days since login release bonus event. However, 
The 300 days since release login bonus had the Madoka Homura Memoria as their bonus, which we got for our 400 days anniversary event. So we got the Japanese 300 days event as our 400 days event, which is running right now. Um, and we just skipped the 200 days event completely, so it seems like we're never gonna get this, unless maybe they're gonna do like a 500 days since release event, and then we're gonna get this. I have no idea what the fuck they're doing, but worth mentioning, this is basically the same memoria, but since we don't have access to the other one, hey, maybe having a 30% HP restore is gonna be fine if you're playing like a hyper tank and you wanna heal a hyper tank back up. Nice. Which also has some, um, uh, it does have some synergy with Sword with Rising Space Between Line and Dark because the Sword with Rising Space Between Line and Dark does give the maximum amount of damage bonus, like attack up bonus, when you're at full HP. So if you have the Sword with Rising Space Between Line and Dark, then playing uh, this together with Beach House Fun would be a pretty good combo. So you can take some damage, which would deactivate the Sword with Rising Space Between Line and Dark, and then uh, pop this to heal yourself back up to 100%, so that the Sword with Rising Space Between Line and Dark would give you the full bonus again. Nice. But yeah, that's the cooldown is really fucking annoying though. Not much else to say, like I've gone on about some basic stuff for longer than I should have. But yeah, that's I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that subscribe button, leave a comment below, hit that like button. Sell me your soul for five bucks, I'll take it. I hope you guys enjoyed this, see you guys next time.